Why Formula One tires are slick and not carved like the road ones? Huh, why? Because they have more grip, you can say. Okay, but why did the first Formula One tires were not slick? And why 20 years ago tires were not slick as well? And also, why the road tires are not slick? In this video, I'm going to explain you the physics behind the tires, and I will also tell you a crazy legend about how the first slick tires were invented. Okay, just a quick definition before starting. If a tire is not carved, but it's smooth instead, it's called slick. And that's exactly the kind of tire that we see on race cars, like Formula One, NASCAR cars, etc. Now, let's start talking about the physics. I will do it quick, easy to understand for everybody. One of the most important things you need to know about cars is that the car sticks on the road only thanks to the tires. You can have the most powerful engine, the best suspension, the best chassis, but if the tires don't work properly, the car will not make any corner. Technically, when a tire sticks to the ground, we talk about grip. But the question is, how does the tire stick to the asphalt? Well, it might look easy, but actually that's one of the most complex science to study. Because the grip of tires is made possible by two phenomena, which is chemistry and physics. Let's start with the chemistry. Talking about Formula 1 tires, have you ever heard about compound? The compound of the tire, technically, is the chemical composition of the tread. And depending on the compound, the ability of the tire to stick to the asphalt changes. Talking about the compound, we can think of it like a sort of glue that sticks to the ground. And normally, if the compound is softer, which means if you touch the tire, you feel it's softer, the more grip it will have, but it wears out faster. Okay, and what about the physics? Well, it's true that the compound must have a grip, but it's also true that the tire must be able to deform itself in order to adapt to the asphalt. Therefore, the grip depends on the combination of the chemistry, the compound, and the physics, which is the ability of the tire to fit to the asphalt. Now, I want to show you this experiment. If you take one pencil eraser, you put it on the table and move it, what happens? It happens that the eraser slides on the table. But if you put pressure on the rubber, what happens? It happens that the rubber sticks to the table and deforms itself. Here, you can see the compound working, you can see the physics working, but you can also see one third important concept, which is the load on the tire. The more surface of the tire touches the ground, and the more grip you have. And that's exactly the reason why Formula One cars have the wings. Because the wings, thanks to their aerodynamics, are capable of pushing the car down, increases the contact patch of the tire to the ground, and therefore increasing the grip. So at this point, we're able to answer to the initial question, which is why Formula One tires are slick. The answer is simple. A slick tire, compared to a road tire, simply has more contact patch on the ground. So, having more tire touching the asphalt means more grip. So, why road tires are not slick if they are more performing? The reason is simple. Water. If the asphalt is wet, it means that between the asphalt and the tire, there is water. And if you're driving a slick tire, it slips on the asphalt. That's why on the road you use carved tires. Because the water passes through the carves and makes the rubber touch the asphalt. That's why on the road you use threaded tires. And that's why in Formula 1, when the rain comes, you have to switch tires. Okay, but why in the past they were not using slick tires in Formula 1? I mean, look at this picture. This is from 1950. And those tires were super carved. Why? I mean, they invented the atomic bomb, and they were not aware that more contact patch means more grip. Hmm, huh, they knew that. So, why not using slick tires? Well, one answer could be that back in those days, things were less sophisticated, things were cheaper, so in order not to make things too complicated, they were using threaded tires. Like, for example, we do in legend cars nowadays. Well, actually, this is not the answer, because, for example, in 1960s, they were using two different types of tires, one for dry condition and one for wet conditions. But the dry tires were still threaded and not slicks. Why? Well, the reason is simple. They knew the physics. But the problem is that the compound and the structure of those tires was simply too hard, because the technology was not yet ready for softer compounds. So the problem was that if they were using slick tires, the tire was so hard that in the corner it was not capable of deforming itself and therefore it was losing grip. So they decided to carve the tires in order to make the tires more flexible and therefore getting more grip. So when did the slick tires arrive in Formula 1? The first official race was in 1971 in the Spanish Grand Prix where Firestone introduced them for the first time. And there is also a crazy legend about it which says that the slick tires were born by incident. 
So the legend says that apparently Ferrari was doing some tests in 1970s and Ferrari was already on track and was waiting for the tires and for the technician responsible of carving the tires. Yeah, because those tires, they used to arrive slick at the racetrack and then a specialized technician was responsible of carving them. The legend says that those tires arrived to the track but the technician did not because he was late. So considering that Ferrari already paid the rent of the track and didn't want to lose time and money, they said, okay guys, let's put the tires like this, let's drive and see what happens. And you know what happens? That those cars with those tires were much faster on the corners. So you know what? Let's use the slick tires. In fact, in Spain, that Ferrari, driven by Jackie X, finished in P2. And that meant that the era of slick tires has just begun. Okay, this is what the legend says, but you know, the truth is always less romantic. Because Dunlop since the second half of the 1960s was already experimenting the slick tires. So it was nothing new. It was just a matter of time and finding the right materials. So at this point, because the slick tires were much better, Formula One used slick tires for the rest of the history, right? Well, actually not. Because I don't know if you remember it, but from 1998, Formula One got rid of slick tires and went back to the carved tires. But why? Well, the reason is that those cars were so fast, so powerful and so dangerous that they decided to limit the car performances. And how do you limit a car performance? By reducing the grip. So at first three notches, then four. Simple, straightforward, because after all, it seemed a very logical move. If you reduce the contact patch, you reduce the grip. And it worked, well, not that much, because at that time, there was not just one provider of tires, like nowadays where we have only Pirelli, but there were more providers. And what happens when you have competition? It happens that the level rises. During the early 2000s, the Michelin and Bridgestone tires were just so technological and so advanced that the grip was insane. And it's not a surprise that in 2004, Ferrari set all the lap records in every track that almost lasted for 20 years. And there is one thing that we forgot to mention, is that if you reduce the contact patch of a tire, you reduce the grip on corner, but you increase the speed on the straight because you reduce the friction. So it's like a short blanket. They reduce the grip on the corners, but they increase the speed on the straights. So 11 years later, in 2009, they reintroduced the slick tires in Formula One, which nowadays are still used. And you're probably wondering why they decided to go back to slicks. Well, for sure, the safety standards of the car and the race trucks has improved a lot. But the main reason behind reintroducing the slick tires was that they wanted to increase the duels and fights on the track. <laughs> And that's something not new. It's the story that repeats itself. So what was the idea? The idea is that the aerodynamic was a big problem in Formula 1. Why? Because as I told you in the beginning of the video, most of the grip a Formula 1 car gets is from the aerodynamic load that pushes the car down. But if you're following another car, the turbulences disturb your aerodynamic and the only way to regain grip is just to get away from the other car. Therefore, no duels. So the idea was simple. Let's reduce the aerodynamic to reduce the downforce and let's give back that grip that we removed by reintroducing the slick tires. And did it work? Well, not exactly. Because the downforce of Formula 1 cars was still super high. And no matter what you do, as long as your car is close to the other one, it loses grip. So in the end, those four pieces of rubber, which may seem super simple, actually hide an incredible technology. So now you can say that you know why Formula 1 tires are slick.